Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. I've got a message I want to bring to you. Only a few words are from the Lord, and the rest is from, I'm sure, Holy Spirit-led sister in Christ. Her name is Avarine Pennington, and this was found and shared by me where it was grafted in Team Jesus. Their website is teamjesus222.com. If you want to check out all the many, many, many videos they have on all the subjects we need to know about in this day and age that we're living in. All right, let me read this to you. It was shared on October the 18th of 21. This message was laid on my heart this morning by the Holy Spirit. Often, just as I am rousing from sleep, I will hear in a still small voice a word or phrase that is the first thought on my mind when I open my eyes. That is what occurred today. I heard, quote, give hope to the bride, period, unquote. Pause a minute. I have to tell you, I really needed this. I really needed this. You know, after reading that letter to you, my last video, asking for prayer for Morella and her children, I just had to cry over that and beg God not to let that man sacrifice those children to Satan. And I wrote to Morella and I told her, you cannot let him do that. You have to go get those children. I said, I don't know how you can do it. You may think, how can I do that? I don't know how. She probably doesn't have the money to go get a bus to take her and her two boys and bring back her and four children. And I don't know if they require a vaccination to take the bus. I don't know. I said, I don't know how you're going to do it, but you got to work it out. Trust in the Lord. You know, ask I always told her to trust in the Lord. She knows too. She's strong or she would have given up long ago. Very humble existence. Anyway, I was just like, God, when when is Jesus coming? When are you going to let him come? I want out of this body that holds me back that still has flaws and imperfections and I just want to be perfect and I want to make a difference in this world and when we come back inside of time we will make a difference we will do great exploits we will harvest his wheat saving people healing them feeding them etc I've talked about it before let's get on back to this word and tell, see what she shares with us today to give you some hope okay let me check my position here. Okay, it looks good. I, sometimes I move the camera around the laptop and I wonder, am I still in the middle? All right, so she got in a still small voice, uh, give hope to the bride. I sought the Lord concerning this, asking, what would you have me to say, Lord? And I received no additional word. But in my spirit, I understand that I am to share the, quote, hope that is within me, unquote. The Lord knows me better than I know myself. Boy, howdy, that is so true, y'all. He knows you better than you know yourself. All right, moving on. He knows you, dear bride. He knows how weary you have all become awaiting his soon return. He knows the struggles you are going through. He is aware of every fiery dart the enemy has sent into your life, attempting to thwart you. I believe he wants me to be your cheerleader today, to give you hope, to endure as you run the last and most difficult leg of the race. It is a fight to the finish line, but he wants to assure you that he has already won the victory. Be strong, dear bride. Stay the course. 
Do not look to the right or the left, but keep your eyes on the prize. I know this assignment was meant not only for you, but to strengthen my heart also. I do not want to dwell on all that I have been through in my life in the last 10 months. It has been the most difficult time of my life by far. What I do want to emphasize is the faithfulness of God to me every step of the way. Yesterday was a particularly trying day. I found myself in tears much of the time. My daughter-in-law came for a visit, but our time together was bittersweet. She came to visit the graveside of my son to be as near as she could to him on what would have been their sixth anniversary. How do you console a heart that is so broken? Such sorrow over what is gone, what could have been, a beautiful love story cut short. You share the wonderful memories you talk about what he used to say and do that made you laugh. You let God speak to your heart and remind you that nothing that is loved is ever lost. After our visit was over and she had departed, I was drawn to visit my son's resting place alone. As I placed fresh flowers on his grave, a beautiful orange monarch butterfly kept flitting all around me. I like to think that it was something beautiful that my God sent to cheer me. God is so good. There is one more example I'd like to share with you of God's great faithfulness. Another trial we have been through this year is surviving a house fire. Months have elapsed since the fire, but it took some time to go through the process of insurance claims and finding a contractor willing to deal with such a mess. Finally, with contractor number six, God sent us the perfect crew to do the job. It has taken almost three weeks of demolition and more huge dumpster loads hauled away than I can count. But as of today, the crew will be taking the final wall of the destroyed building down to the foundation. They will sweep the cement clean and within days, new construction will rise. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. She may not be here to see the finished product. Perhaps if they could at least get up the, the majority of it, it could be used for a safe haven. Because I think she's one of the bride, don't you? She says, Dear Bride, I do not know what you may be going through, but I do know who walks beside you. He will never leave you or forsake you. His strength is perfect. When your strength is gone, he will carry you. There is coming a day when he will take you in his arms and wipe away every tear from your eyes. There will be no more sorrow and no more pain. Until that day comes, our Lord asks you to be brave. Whatever obstacles you may encounter on this, on this last mile of the way wherever his calling upon your life may lead you rest on his promises always place your hope in the Lord I will leave you with a few verses to meditate upon hide them in your heart and the Holy Spirit will bring them to your remembrance when you have need of them be encouraged my brothers and sisters who are the bride of Christ. 
You are much loved by your bridegroom. Yours for the harvest, Averine. Okay, then the scriptures. Um, I'll put them in the description box. All right, because the first one starts off Psalm 27. Read the entire chapter. Then there's Psalm 31, 24, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. So I'd rather end it here and let you read these scriptures. Write them, copy and paste to a document on your desktop, whatever you feel led to do. If you feel led to memorize some of them, do so. Take it up with the Lord. I don't think there's anything not of the Lord in this message from her and the words from him. So with that, I'm just going to say, I plead the blood of Jesus. Whoops, what happened there? Trying to drag and pull this out of the way and the camera in the front. Okay, there we go. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you and all, all of us, our devices and our internet connections. And after much working on the computer again yesterday, reinstalling Windows uh, with Kathy from Grafted In Team Jesus, she knows a lot about computers, stuff I forgot. I had known a lot about system defragging and reinstalling programs that didn't work, taking off ones you don't use and all kinds of stuff. Um, I think things are working like they should now. So... Um, with that, I'm going to say God is good. He loves you so much, bride. He loves his other children, too. They're just not ready. They haven't repented. They haven't forgiven somebody or many somebodies. I don't know. Maybe they're still playing around with some little sin that they don't think is all that bad. or Whatever it is, he's in charge. And he will not take someone who is not yet ready. He said, Be ye holy, therefore, for I am holy. And in another verse, nothing unholy will enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's why we got to repent or ask forgiveness. Repentance is typically turning from a sin. So some of that is needed by some people. But for the rest of us, it's a, Oh God, I'm so sorry. I was just complaining. You know, you catch yourself complaining. Like when I'm really tired, I do that. I just, it just comes out. And I'm like, I'm so sick and tired of being in this wicked body. I just want to be with you. Please forgive me for complaining again. You know, you just, I want to be perfect. Don't we all? We should want to. And I'm trying. Let us all just keep trying and don't give up. Don't say, oh, I'm never going to be perfect. That's what the devil wants to believe. Don't listen to him. When you get negative thoughts like that, like what's the point of trying? I just can't do it. I just keep on doing the same thing. I keep complaining or I keep this or I keep doing that. And you get the tendency to just give up. Don't give up. We're too close to the end. Okay, we're running a race as if we're the only one going to win. Remember how Paul taught it? You run the race as to win the prize. The prize, we all want the prize. That we all be found worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man, our groom, Jesus Christ. Okay, y'all have a blessed day. Bye for now. I'll talk to you later.